Welcome Meyer of Design Studio Sewing Machine fans. Today we are celebrating Thrift Store Tuesday, um, which is not generally <laughs> a big uh, deal. A lot of times I peruse my local thrift shops to kind of see what's going on, if there's any new sewing machines. There's a local one that um, tends to be a little bit more expensive, but a lot of times they have some good stuff. So just to point out, today you may have walked right past this little brown box. I, I knew I was looking for a particular machine um, and I knew I was looking for a particular type of machine and it was coming in this kind of box. You can kind of see the top has a little triangular top. Um, and this is a machine I've been looking for for some time. I just want to show you, I'm actually going to unwrap it like I did in the thrift store so you can see what I saw and what I'm looking for when I'm looking for a vintage sewing machine. So right away, um, I do like to see if the case is intact and sometimes it can be beat up. And you know what that did? That means that this case has done its job and protected this sewing machine from everything could possibly go wrong on it. Um, this is what I like to see when I'm buying a sewing machine. Uh, the, it has an accessories box. An accessory box. This has all the good stuff in it. My husband calls this case candy. It has the straight stitch plate. It has the accessories. It has most of the most of the feet. I believe it is missing one of the feet. I think it's missing a zip, zigzag foot or a, uh, a zipper foot. It has the little tiny quick start guide. I actually haven't seen the quick start guide before on this sewing machine. It's kind of nice that it um, tells you how things are how things are supposed to go and get you going. Um, and then also the thing I really love to see, and the thing that's most important to me usually, is that it, it still has its original manual. So this is a 764. Um, these have like top handle machines. There are very similar models. Um, for a period of time, White was making these sort of top handle machines, which you would think it was really light because it has a top handle on it, but it's actually, I don't know, 30 some pounds. I can probably weigh it. Um, these machines, were commonly called fair lady or a fair lady uh, fair lady versions are actually a specific model of this and it will have a it will have a needle um it will have a cover plate here bobbin cover plate and it'll have um i think it's hse or something on this um, and that's the fair model from 1964. Uh, the common thinking is that white sewing machine company uh, introduced this in 19 64 for the World's Fair, but um, there is actually good research on several different groups. Um, Victor and Sweatshop, the Facebook uh, White Kenmore group, um, they've all found manuals from 1962. So this had been in production for a period of time. Very often this sewing machine has a, a broken, there's a nylon gear in it and it's a pretty important one. So if you do come across one of these, uh, you will want to make sure um, you will want to make sure that it's working and not crunchy sounding. It's hard to explain, but there is a gear. I can tip it back. Uh, a gear that's down here, and this is a, a it's a, a drive gear. I forget what's called. It's driving the hook, um, and the hook uh, gear itself. It's a half moon gear, and in later models, it is a nylon gear, and it can be broken. If you're starting out collecting, this is definitely not one you want to start out with. Um, more often than not, that gear has broken over time. I'm not sure if that was in later models, where the cutoff is. There's no real good dating in terms of identifying one of these 764s from other models. But again, yeah, it's really neat. And I do like to see that uh, that someone has sewn recently with it. This is a stitch, um, stitch example that came from the thrift shop. And like I said, I definitely take a look under anything that's in a case. And... I passed a few good ones today uh, that were in rough shape and maybe next time I'll sort of do the in the wild view of what I'm looking for because um, there were some that were rough but were definitely too expensive for the condition that they were in. Um, again, this is, the wires were all checked out. This thrift store locally does a really good job of making sure that they're not putting unsafe models on the floor and if they do, they're marketing, you know, marking them you know, accurately in terms of they need work or not safe to sew. They'll have like you know, a repair special. So yeah, um, hopefully this helps you get an idea. This one's a cool one. Um, I like it because it's actually pretty much all the stitches that I ever use. This is the triple stitch. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in here if I can. Um, this is the triple stitch. And um, this is the stretch stitch. Actually, I'll pull up 
needle up out of the fabric. Um, and these are all of the buttonhole positions, which is a big deal. And then there's a manual for when you want to do your manual zigzag. And this is your, um, that's another stretch stitch. Um, yeah, that's your stretch stitch, blanket stitch. Um, and this is your triple stitch, which I use for pretty much everything that I'm doing. Um, hope you enjoyed this. This gives you an idea. Good luck in your own thrift store vintage sewing shopping. Hopefully you come across a gem. Uh, this one's definitely can have issues, a bit of a risk today, but I want out because it has an intact gear and it's a metal one. So um, look forward to showing you more about these wipes in the future. Thanks for watching.